I'm going to go ahead and start with um, an 11G demo. And I hope everyone can see this. I don't have to re-log in. I've been uh, off this for a while, so hopefully I won't have to re-log in in the middle of this. But as I log in, as I've already logged into 11G, I'm brought to a home page, and this is why I alluded to earlier is the front page of your uh, of your of your really newspaper, your dashboards or reports. But this is a jumping off point where I can create new analysis and interactive reporting on the left hand side here. I can create new filters, dashboard prompts, conditions, etc. I can create new reports, new agents. I mentioned that that agent or that iBot that runs around the back checking for things as business conditions occur. I can do that all from the left hand side here. I can browse existing content. Uh, everything is stored here in what's called a catalog or a web catalog. You can think of a web catalog as a set of folders that you can navigate uh, that's you know, your own set of folders or a set of shared folders if you have access to it. On the right hand side are your most recent content that you've browsed, as well as popular dashboards that may exist or popular reports that may exist. In this case, I have access to many different dashboards based on my user ID. I've logged in here. I've actually logged in as an administrator called WebLogic. I can look at my account or I can do other things here as well. I can browse different dashboards. So for example, if I want to do some functional examples here, I'm going to highlight or I'm going to select a simple demo dashboard. So as I select simple demo dashboard, I'm navigated to the simple demo dashboard. And you know, you can read everything on the right hand on the, on the top left hand side here. I have many different tabs here. There's brand analysis, product details, strategy tree, geoprompter. These are all uh, examples of uh, different dashboard pages. Now you can organize them as appropriate to be different parts of your business or different or focused on different um, portions of a certain department or whatever. On the left hand side of this dashboard page, you'll see a bunch of different prompts. I can choose different years. I can choose different companies. I can use sliders to choose numbers to, to have something to go between for the weeks here. And I can choose different products, maybe enter it in myself. I can press apply and everything within this dashboard page would change accordingly, assuming it's linked up, linked up appropriately. You'll see that many of the data that's showing here or a lot of the information that's showing here is showing up in many different forms. There's different grids, grid reports, and I'm going to just kind of navigate down here and I'll show you how I can just use this plus icon to expand um, all the different entities that might be showing up here. I can drill down on certain years or maybe I can drill down on all the different years here. So as I right click I can drill. Let me just go ahead and drill. By default it'll drill down to half year and I can keep on drilling down to to, to months or whatever showing up here. If I wanted to, I can drill down even further. So let me choose one of these values. I'll just choose uh, this value right here. And again, it's not just a simple drill down. Other solutions might let you just drill down and maybe drill navigate to lower levels of detail or drill navigate to, to other things. You have the ability to make different, take many different actions here. I can raise my marking priority for this level of business. So you know it'll take in context that this is customer number 758 and my message to whoever this is going to go to is raise marketing actions workflow or maybe this will execute something that happens within PeopleSoft or JD Edwards or Oracle Business Suite or whatever custom application you may have. You know other things I can do here I can visit a pipeline application so it'll maybe pass on this customer information or this this um, this um, this timely information or whatever in context to this pipeline application. I can see order details, so maybe I'll just click see order details. And this is another way of, you know, passing in context more information about the orders that might make up that number. So you'll see here, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do. It's not just drill down. Oracle BI is more than just a bunch of dashboards and reports. It really gives you the ability to analyze and report, but also more importantly, take action once you see fit. You'll see here on the left-hand side here, um, you know, there's sliders here. I can go ahead and really have things animate as necessary, and and the charts will change as appropriate. I can click on these charts if I want to, and I can drill down. On the right-hand side, again, more animation here. Uh, there's uh, there's um, tickers. If I wanted to, 
um, zoom in on some of this information, I can do so. Uh, Oracle BI, uh, the, the new dashboards and reports gives you the ability to, to really zoom into deeper levels of detail interactively within the report itself. Let's just navigate to uh, product details here, a different dashboard page, just highlighting some of the other things here. Um, again, there's bubble charts here. You'll see there's divorced, married, single, and widow. Uh, I can use uh, the prompts on the left-hand side. Maybe I'll change it to French, and I'll change it to quantity. I'll press apply, and everything within this dashboard page will now be reflected in, uh, in French. And it's now reflecting quantity. I can add commentary to this dashboard if I want. I'm not going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at the commentaries on this page. So now I can have an interactive and an ongoing discussion with all the people that have access to this dashboard page. You know, maybe I would want to put, you know, why are my sales so low or why am I not hitting targets or whatever. Um, I can go ahead and add these commentaries on this dashboard. And as appropriate, these commentaries can be sent to all the people who have either subscribed to this content or people who have access to this dashboard or who want to see commentaries on this. Moving forward, <clears throat> I had mentioned the scorecarding uh, that, uh, that came from the Hyperion and PeopleSoft acquisition and Oracle's taking the best uh, features of that scorecard and uh, scorecarding product. And now you're able to um, see scorecards as, um, as a separate type of uh, component within Oracle Business Intelligence. You'll see here, if you, for those of you unfamiliar with scorecards, a scorecard is really a collection of metrics. And these metrics typically have owners. And they're usually trended over time. So the point to a scorecard is really to see trends over time or period to period. Assign owners to them so that people have ownership of it, that they are accountable for it. And it also provides the ability to do dialogues and collaboration so that it, you can have ongoing dialogues with other owners or other stakeholders with those metrics. And these metrics are typically tied together. So for example, improved financial reserve results, uh, it's red because of factors from increased sales and reduced costs. And increased sales is red because of factors from revenue KPI, average revenue per FTE, build quantity, et cetera. If I wanted to see more information, I could either drill down or, you know, I can open up this scorecard metric. <clears throat> and I can see who the owners are. And maybe this scorecard metric is divided among different people. You know, maybe there's one person that, that owns this overall scorecard metric, but maybe the different regions have different, you know, the different, as I break down these different regions, maybe there's an African or Cameroon person that owns a, the, the scorecard metric for that particular attribute. Anyway, my whole point to this is you can see trends over time and the metrics, uh, the different highlights, the different arrows and down arrows and up arrows will change based on what's happening from period to period or how it's different how, or how it's weighted. <clears throat> and the other key thing is collaboration. I can add comments and you can have an ongoing history of this metric and how it's been performing over time. If you want more information, certainly I urge you to, to reach out to us um, and we can have exploratory you know, sessions as to how you could use scorecards and how Oracle BI 11G uses it. Or of course, you know, hit up your Oracle salesperson or uh, whoever your customer uh, facing person is within Oracle to, to give you more information about scorecards. <clears throat> something that's not necessarily new within 11G, but something that's certainly uh, more enhanced with Oracle Business Intelligence C11G is all the mapping information that you can now grab as, a, as first class objects. You know, I can do all the different drill downs that I would expect to do within, um, within business intelligence, but now it's just much more elegantly integrated with, uh, with, uh, with the map types of integration uh, with MapViewer. And it's not just MapViewer. I mean, we have one customer that does it with Ezra. You could do this with Google Maps, all those different things. It's, it's just map. Map integration is just a, is just uh, it's so much more easier now, uh, especially if you're an Oracle customer. So that being said, let me go ahead and you know that's all great and well for the end users and people that would normally see dashboards and 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 maybe executive users. You know, if I wanted to create my own analysis, <clears throat> if I wanted to create my own report, you know, what is the process for doing that? I can I can go to the home page or I can go to new. I can click on analysis here 
And it brings me to a set of subject areas that I can navigate. So I'm just going to click on sample sales. Sample sales gives me the ability to navigate the subject area on the left-hand side. So again, a subject area is nothing more than a set of really attributes and measures that I can now click and choose to bring over to the working side on the right-hand side. And I can choose, say, let's just choose brand, and maybe I'll choose, I don't know, I'll just choose year. Maybe I want to filter on things, so I want to filter on you know, everything greater than or equal to, I don't know, uh, 2004. So that's an easy way to create filters. So you, know, you can see with ad hoc analysis, I can go ahead and you know, bring in attributes, bring in measures, move stuff around, add filters, you know, sort things as I, as I need to. Maybe I'll sort things ascending here. I can add calculated measures. I can create, you know, if I wanted to change the definition for build quantity, not that I want to, I can change it here. There's all sorts of things I can do in terms of adding calculations here if I want to, but I'm not going to do that for now. Anyway, to see the results, I'm going to go to this results tab, reaches out into the information, grabs it. Now from here, I can do all the things I was showing on the dashboard. Maybe I want to, maybe I want to drill down, you know, maybe I just want to keep on drilling down to the lowest level of detail. I don't know. Anyway, you can see here I built this very quick list report. Um, if I wanted to, I can create a new view. I'm going to create a new view, call it pivot table. <clears throat> pivot table, if you guys are used to it, is very similar to what you expect in Excel. You have the ability to really move stuff around. That's the best way I can put it. But you know, I'll just take out, I'll exclude that half year. I'm going to maybe move that year to a prompt. So on the right hand, on the top, you'll see now I can choose from different years. You know, uh, if I wanted to, I can maybe move brand to a section. So everything is being reflected on the top here as I'm moving stuff around. If I wanted to, maybe I'll take this revenue and I'll duplicate it, and I'll just change this to be a percentage of uh, the column. You know, if I wanted to, I can change this to be. I'll just change this to be percent of total. Press OK. And then maybe I'll add, uh, you know, I'll add a total on the very bottom. <clears throat> so that's all well and good. That's how it's going to show up on the dashboard. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and press done. And you'll see now that um, this is my table view. I'll just go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to go ahead and add this pivot table by dragging it and dropping it to that compound layout. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what if I want to have some neat charts? So I'm going to go ahead and add a chart. I'll add a graph. Maybe we'll add a line bar, gar, a line bar graph. Brings us to an interface that's you know a little bit similar to that ad hoc. Maybe I want to, um, I don't know. Maybe this is exactly what I want. <laughs> uh, or maybe I, it's not what I want. Maybe I'll exclude again a half year. If I can grab it properly, uh, maybe I want to move it around. Maybe I want to change a legend. All sorts of things, right? I'm just going to go ahead and just press done. This is good enough for me. I just want to illustrate that you can create many different types of graphs, and I can move it to the side. I can move it to the top <clears throat> as necessary. From here, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And I'll save this under my folders, or I can save it under shared folders. If I save it under shared folders, this is something that I can give uh, access to other people. I'll just save this as you know, norm1. Press OK. And then I can navigate to my dashboard. And this is my own little selfish dashboard. And let's see. Let's just go to an existing dashboard. Actually, let's go ahead and edit this dashboard. And if I wanted to, I can just go ahead and take that norm one and just add it wherever I see fit. Now, this doesn't make much sense, but you, I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. We'll go ahead and run this. Oh, you know what? I didn't save it. Let me go ahead and save it. 
Bear with me for a second. I'll take my my dashboard. You want to I'll save it. I'm going to go ahead and press run. And now you'll see here that this was the request that I created earlier with all the interactivity that I would expect. So what have I done here? Really, Oracle BI 11G gives us the ability to do many different things, integrate and up or operate with other other Oracle technologies. I've shown you how to navigate different dashboards, how to create different requests. Um, you know, I, I haven't shown you how to do alerts, but you know, it, it's very similar to what I was showing you earlier if you're used to this interface. Um, anyway, I'm hoping that I've given you a good feel for what 11G looks like if it's your first time, and certainly I hope you can, you can see the differences and how it's so much more exciting than what we were seeing in, in 11G, in 10G, I should say.